Welcome back to the channel. This is Bailey Wicked Guns Shipwrecks. I'm JP Fallows, and we're about to go up Scallop Diving. Look at the weather, another day of just beautiful sunshine. It's a Wednesday morning. Go up diving every single day. I love it, and I hope you love it too because uh, you're going to come along with me now on another dive. Let's go. You never guess what's happened. I've come down the boat, and look who's here. <laughs> Phil's here as well. So he's managed to get a few hours off of work. Here's all the old fishermen on the quay here, look. Hiding behind that pot. Sorting these scallops out. He's got to make room for when we come back with a load more scallops. See you later, Richard. Yeah, can it looks like oil? It's gonna be a nice one. It's gonna be a lovely day. It's a nice surprise to see you, Phil. Yeah, not a surprise to be here. Tell you the truth. Lovely. Yeah, gonna make the most of this when the weather's good. Exactly. It's a shame the others couldn't have come as well. Shame. We got the young lad Jeffrey on the uh, on the wheel. Morning, Jeffrey. <laughs> Super hot. I reckon it's 23, 24 degrees already. I don't want that sun to come out. Not a day to be in thermals, and also not a day to be in work. Look at that, again. Everyone else has got the same idea, look, get some fuel and get out on the boat. Some more divers getting ready to go out. All this week I've decided to pick a different reef to dive, so today's Full Rhine. We've been dropped to the north of the reef. As we uh, head down, we're going to head down into the deepest part first. I can already see the first critter that I want to go and film. It's a sea cucumber, just here and it's this old crab pot. I don't think I need to explain what's happening here. We better give it some privacy. Not often you see a man like this, just casually walking around. This is only a baby, so he can live for another day. Check out the collar blue on his tail, it's cool.
because of the proximity of this reef being so close to the harbour and next to an old anchorage it's bound to have some sort of anchors trapped in it and this is the third one I've seen on it I've seen one on the inside one on the outside but laying on the sand completely and now this one the third one as I pan back you can actually see the scale of it see how big it is compared to Phil Phil's probably close to six foot so this must be 12 foot easy 12 foot actually 12 foot by maybe seven foot This is an admiralty patterned anchor, so this is quite typical. It's really hard to age anchors like this, but I'm sure some people probably could. I certainly can. I know these, these are the flukes, and they're absolutely huge. Definitely a sand anchor. I'm not quite sure what all this concretion stuff is on the bottom. It could be a chain that's wrapped around it and just consolidated or concretions growing around it you can see here it's leaning onto the reef here's the ring it would have been attached to the cable or the chain probably would have been you know maybe all chain or maybe been a bit of chain and then into rope but either way it's snapped off somehow so the ring's still here but the rope and chain's completely gone it can't be seen anywhere around either so maybe they retrieve that There's just something about these old anchors. I absolutely love them. Really cool. Quite exciting when you re, re find one or rediscover one. Oh. As we're in 33 metres, I think it's about time we just carried on. So we're now heading around the northern tip of this reef. There's actually a huge sandbank that comes down from west being the shallowest and east being the deepest. was to go around the reef or around the head of the reef anti-clockwise up in a spiral getting shallower all the time this is the big sandbank you can see some crab pots out there that have been lost I think Phil's found something he has this is a crayfish so you're not allowed to touch these really um, you're definitely not allowed to catch them as a diver but what Phil tends to do is puts his hand there sometimes they climb up his arm in this case, he didn't want any of it, so he just swam off. So that's it, we'll leave him there. Take a look how plain this one is. This is like a sort of washed out colored one. There's no blue around its eyes and there's no dark colors on its legs. I once got told by a fisherman that the whiter ones seem to roam around a bit more but the much darker colour ones with the blue on their eyes tend to stay in one location. Not quite sure if this is true or not, but I reckon it might just be because it's moulted. I'm not sure. If it was trying the same trick again, let them decide if they want to come on to you. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. See, this one didn't want it, so I'll leave them be. This one's much more solid in colour. I'm 
running out bottom time at six minutes so we're going to go up a little bit and then shallow out again and carry on looking what i've tried to do on this reef dive is try and do a continuous unedited amount of footage just so you see actually you know it's seamless what we don't we do i never had in any footage from other videos or other dives it's all all actually seen on this dive so this is that sandbank it's probably 25 30 degrees steep pretty steep these round things on the seabed are the top of crab pots This is a fairly new fish to our waters. This is a coma fish, normally found in waters that are a lot warmer than ours. A cool little fish, people actually catch these on a rod as well. They're, they're, I haven't seen any is any bigger than this one. Try looking at all different sort of areas because sometimes the smallest things are the most interesting things well for me anyway crayfish on this reef but they're all well well lower than the legal limit none of them are big they might look big on camera but they're really not actually that big they do actually grow big they can grow up to about 600 millimeters long and about 4.2 kilos this one in the image was caught in Cornwall in 2014 it's the biggest seen enemy there making me squeeze for a tiny little golly ear. I think he wants to show me something. Oh look at this, this is the first time I've ever seen this. This is a molt from a crayfish. I know other divers have seen them. Richard Keane had one not long ago. That's the first time I've ever seen one of these. Just the tail part. We'll leave it there because it might be in the immediate area and it might need to eat that to give it some more calcium to stiffen up its new shell. As soon as we come up higher it seems we're going to be heading back down again, we're right on the sort of 20 meter mark with the seaweed just starting to grow back again. This 
part reminds me of underwater pea stacks towering up high it's almost like we're we're making our way down a an old cobbled street somewhere When you look up, it's like when you're looking up into the mountains, it's all kind of cloudy above your head. Loads of pink sea fans and just below it, they're called chocolate finger sponge. They do actually look like chocolate fingers as well. Still got five minutes bottom time left, but we're heading deeper, so we're actually going to lose some of this time. So what we'll try and do is we'll have a little scout around here. Oh, I think Phil's found something. Cool, Phil's found another candy stripe flatworm. These can be pale yellow or like a creamy colour. And then you grow up to about five centimeters or about 50 millimeters long really nicely patterned with dark red stripes i can't see no little white dots on it so it hasn't got eggs there's loads of cluster and enemies here I haven't seen that many before as always we've got a um a transitional cuckoo wrasse so it's a female turning into a male Oh, there's a hole under this rock. I'm going to have to go down and have a look. Quick spin of the body. Oh, I can see a lobster. Oh, look, it's got the bottom of its claw taken off. That's obviously got away from a fisherman because it's still got a rubber band around its claw. If I could reach in, I would have taken that rubber band off from it. No, not so bad because it's going to molt soon probably, so it'll lose that claw. As we've crept back down to 25 meters, we do actually need to go up a bit higher. Otherwise, we're going to run out of bottom time. Look at these sea fans, pink sea fans. Everyone seems to be covered in an egg sack, shark eggs. Not quite sure if they're any good or not. A lot like they've got a bit of growth on, so it could have been from last year's. They've got little tendrils that wrap around them. See this one as well. tendrils attached around the middle and normally on both ends as well this reef just keeps coming up and up and up it's awesome we're only on one side of it as well there's another head just to the left just check my air 120 bar still got half a tank left but only one minute so we've got to go back up higher and then level out again and have another swim around we're going anti-clockwise around this head. We're now up to the level where the seaweed is just starting, so probably, without even looking, between 20 and 15 metres. Now we're at the level of kelp, that's between 10 and 12 metres. What's Phil seen? He's 
found another cotton spinning sea cucumber by the looks. Oh, look at this, it goes down and down and down. Ah, it feels found something else. I think I know what this is. This is an old oxygen bowl. It's a big long one. Let's try and take a little look. It shouldn't really be going deeper anymore. We're actually meant to be going up. But I can't resist it. I've got to go in and have a little look. Whoa, as I'm filming the top here, I've just noticed something inside this hole. I think we just found the culprit for laying all of these little egg pouches everywhere. You can't see it, but that's a large tail off of something. Let's see if we can get in a bit closer. I could tell what tail that is straight away. I don't want to be sticking my head in this hole, believe me. It's a big bull hoss. So he's jammed up there inside the roof, probably asleep. I know other divers that would pull it out by the tail just to have a look, but I'm going to leave it rest. Kicking the dust up as I go down. Do you see its tail hanging out? Anyway, we really need to be starting to head up now. There's another cotton spinner or two. Yeah, there's two just there. Anyway, now I'm going to quick start swimming to the surface. Not too fast, and catch up with Phil. Phil's already made his way up to the top. These are definitely smooth hound shark eggs. The rays are more square. There's an edible sea urchin down there. We've got one minute deco at three meters. We still have time to look at in all these little crevices, just to have a little look. Also, you notice Phil very carefully pops his head out over the top of the reef. Sometimes you get uh, shoals of fish with a bass or pollock swimming around. Phil's found an edible sea urchin. This is obviously up at this level, feeding on all this kelp. Not a massive one, but still quite nice to look at. And there's its mouth underneath. It's got three sort of, almost like parrot beak, sort of claspers uh, that come together. Quite neatly engineered, to be honest. Just waiting for our three minute safety stop and then we'll head up. Well, that for a reef dive that was awesome plenty of life down there all sorts of uh, soft corals um, also do you see how many uh, shark eggs there were the little pelters loads of them anyway we think we probably found the uh, the culprit that was laying all them hidden up near that big uh, I don't know what it was or some sort of long cylinder that had been done I think it could be um, when they have big air banks in uh, compressors they use them uh, Look like a J size cylinder, big old thing, you just dump it. I don't know why you'd dump it to see. But anyway, um, great dive. You've seen that new anchor. I've never seen that anchor before. There is a, I know there's definitely a few more anchors on that, but that one I hadn't seen before. Um, it had a load of, uh, I don't know what it was, metal or chain or something wrapped around the bottom of the uh, shaft. So that's a new one, I have to put that in the uh, register keep a little uh, Excel spreadsheet with a photograph and depth and rough location for all of these. Uh, just in case we want to go back and film them again. 
So just back in the water, he's going to do a scallop. I think me and Phil now need to pay for some fuel, so we're going to do a bit of a scallop. Uh, and we might, might go and see another big anchor that um, Jeff knows about uh, up in the shallows. But we'll see, we'll see how we go. We might do, if we don't do it, I'll do it, definitely do it another day and I'll show you what, what's there. But apparently it's a beast, beast of an anchor. And if you're right in close, so it would have been from a ship uh, on a leeward shore. Um, issues and then it's dropped an anchor down to try and uh, stop it from going and burning, guessing. So, look at that. It's absolutely amazing weather. Doesn't get much flatter than this here. And it's guessing 24, 25 degrees. So, almost to the point that the steam coming off the deck when it gets wet. What did you think of that one, Phil? No, I've never seen that anchor before. It's huge big flukes on it. It's a big fluke too. You can imagine. No. Must have broke away, uh, yeah. tried lifting it, I'm not sure. Dogfish versus in the coral. What's the name of that pink coral with the dogfish? Uh it's called. I um, I know what it's called, but I can't think what it's called. Is yeah. it? <laughs> For some reason I've got gardenia in my head, but it's not gardenia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you, you found that flatworm as well. There's like a like a humbug sweet that had been rolled out flat. <laughs> exactly, yeah, but they're, 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 you say they're a zebra worm. They're yeah, they're a flatworm. No, they're a flatworm. The mums are pretty cool. I've only ever seen them in sark before. And in yeah. fact, you it was you that pointed it to me last time. I think, as well, talking about sark, what were those daffodil and then? That video you did with Daffodil Oh, in Daffodil Alley, Alley yeah. And I'm sure I saw little ones just yeah. in the deep earth tidal part of the reef. Yeah, they're called, called um, uh, is it Sunset Cop Corals. That's the ones. Yeah. yeah. And, and they are actually great. quite rare. So there is actually a few that's been documented in Guernsey when you go on the website. Yeah. Um, none at this end, they're all down uh, that way. But. And what looked like the leftovers of a big old glass, black glass bottle. Yes. Is that a big black one? It was. like a shiny mirror in the top of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was, uh, yeah, it's from an, uh, an olive bottle, I'm guessing. Yeah, absolutely. What else did you find? Yeah, well, you found a big um, bump house. I didn't see that. Yeah. I was running into deco at the time, so I had to put the ripcord down to the surface. <laughs> what about something else I've never seen as well as we come up over the top of the reef? You called me over. Sea urchins, we see. What about the crayfish? Crayfish. You, lobsters. you found the crayfish molt, which I've never yes. seen before. Yeah, it's just the shell. That's, so that's when that happens, when they molt. So they outgrow their shell and then shed the shell and grow a new one, which is all soft for a while. So they're a bit uh, vulnerable to predators, I think, when they're in that stage. So, yeah, that was, that was unusual. I'd only ever seen one other, and that was when I was out on the west coast last year. Uh, it was just missing its head. It was a big, big body, and even a big one that shed the shell. You know, this is awesome. Yeah, awesome. I'd love to see one doing it. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. Yeah. And also, as soon as I hit the seabed, and you'll see on the video, I got a um, them cotton spinner uh, uh, sea cucumbers. Mm. Decided to take a dump as soon as I took a <laughs> picture yeah. of it. <laughs> of course, private moment. Yeah, I know. <laughs> my boys, <laughs> my boys being boys, are going to be laughing at that. Awesome, great. So, scalloper next. Yeah, and I'll keep. Yeah, got to give give Keeney his, uh, his fuel money. Yeah. But look at it. Oh. And there's Jeff. And you can see his bubbles right over there. And literally, this, this reef we've just been in here, it's called Thorine, is 200 metres away from Guernsey. Literally. Castle Corner. 12th century, Castle Corner. And literally just here you haven't even got to go to egypt if you're, if you're thinking about getting uh, your dive gear out and coming and diving in guernsey but onshore don't be onshore just come diving literally come diving so this is where we went we went into this head here no we didn't we went on this head here apologies we went down here in four right
I mean, Ferrico is a nice one as well. We'll do that one as well. We'll do that dive. So we, we come in down here. In for our scallop dive. Basically we catch scallops and we leave them on the boat and Richard does whatever he wants to do with them, which covers our expenses for us borrowing his boat to go out and play. Uh, so lately we've seen a lot of these. He's a baby pelt, or some people might call him bib. But there's absolutely thousands around at the moment. I've never seen so many. And guess where we are? Yep, that's right on the uh, bits and bobs of shipwreck from the Beaufort is dumped outside Havelet. Look at them all, some of them are silvery colour, some of them have got the stripes, some of them are darker. Pretty cool. I swam through this little bit once, and oh, I don't think I'll ever do it again, it's a bit sketchy. My tank's scraped all along the top of it. As there's a lot of tide here now pushing, which is what we want, because we want the tide to push us down while we just pick some on top. Um, this is why it's very hard to do any filming, so excuse me, but I'm probably not going to do much more filming now. Can you hear that? Tap 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 tap. That's them breaking that slipway in Havelet. Through this location, it's getting harder and harder as the <laughs> summer goes on because the seaweed grows. I hate the seaweed because when you do get the scallops, there's a little bit of it on it and it gets stuck in your bag. And if you don't clean your bag properly, what it ends up doing is it ends up stinking after a day or so. It's quite hard to clean out to be honest. Yeah, that was too small. I'll put that one back. thinking to myself I haven't seen any tub gurnard in a while and look at this this is the smallest tub gurnard I think I've ever seen Let's see if we can get the light on him it's pretty quick and he's gone you can tell he's a tub gurnard by the little blue wings he sticks out basically saying don't touch me I could be poisonous We've done all right today, I think. Got a half decent bag, so we're just making our way back to the surface now. Take a look at my catch. Not bad, not bad for me. I reckon there's probably I don't know, 40, 45 possibly. We'll soon find out when we gauge them on the boat. <coughs> View there. How many did I have? 64. 64. Yeah, between me and Phil, 64. So now yeah. we're heading back up. Only issue is it's now low tide ish because you can see the Trois Grins here, the Free Brothers. Uh, when you can see the head of them, you know the ramp's going to be quite steep but good day's diving you want to come in and anything don't know if he enjoyed it or not the little one's gone off of the roof and we can hear that them pecking on the water and we were miles down over there you can imagine what the dolphins can hear. Did you hear the pecking from the wall? Tick, 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 tick. 
passengers. Sound was obviously transferring all the way through. Here's another one, look. Oh, sorry, mate. You land on me if you want. This is Jeff's bird with the black bits on the head. He's a bully, that one. I don't know who, which bird that is. There's our sea fisheries boat. It's actually moved off its mooring for once. Sun's out. Let's grab the gaff. We well, got you some scallops. I got more than three dozen this time. We got six, 64 for you. Oh, I wish it's 64 dozen. 